I'm going to ask before we begin the program that we please stand so we can salute the flag. building to the Leonard A. Tobias Administration Building. I am Dr. <laughs> I am Dr. Noreen Tanzan Lishak, Superintendent of the South Plainfield School District, and your host for this evening's ceremony. Although I hold the position of Superintendent of the South Plainfield School District today, I simply cannot hold a candle to the legend Mr. Tobias has become to the South Plainfield community. We are joined this evening by some very special guests, and I'm going to ask you if you'll please stand as I call your name. Mr. Tobias's family is here. His daughters, Judith, Mr. Tobias 
would take the time to listen to you. And more importantly, even if he was busy, he would make the time to listen to you. During the August board meeting, the South Plainfield board members unanimously voted to dedicate the Roosevelt Administration Building to Mr. Tobias to honor his many years of service to the students, faculty, and staff of the South Plainfield School District. Mr. Tobias has the distinct honor of having served as the longest tenured superintendent in the history of the South Plainfield School District. So let's see. Mr. Tobias began his tenure in the South Plainfield School District in 1962 and retired in 1992. Although most think he spent far more than 30 years in the district since he returned so often after his retirement to attend student programs and events. Many say you wouldn't be surprised to see him sitting in the front row of the auditorium for a school play or the district music festival. But believe it or not, his life didn't begin here in South Plainfield. Mr. Tobias was born in Lathrope, Pennsylvania, where he graduated from Lathrope High School and went on to St. Vincent College, where he earned his Bachelor of Arts degree in history. He then proudly served his country in the U.S. Army from 1957 to 1959. Once he returned from service, Mr. Tobias went back to school and earned his Master's of Arts in Education and Administration from <coughs> Rutgers University, and later completed additional studies from Columbia University and Seton Hall University. Although Mr. Tobias made a short stopover in the Jamesburg School District, once he landed in South Plainfield in 1962, he never looked back. He served in several positions in the South Plainfield School District, first as a history teacher in South Plainfield High School, and according to his resume, he taught a class called Problems of American Democracy, grade 12. I would take that class today. <laughs> a year later, he was appointed to principal of grad school. Five years after that, he was appointed to principal of the John E. Riley School, and he remained at Riley School until he moved up to central office in 1970, where he served as the coordinator of auxiliary services. In 1972, Mr. Tobias was again promoted, this time to assistant superintendent in charge of administration and personnel, until he made his final move in March of 1973 to superintendent of schools, where he remained until his retirement, January 1st, 1992. As I mentioned, I didn't know Mr. Tobias, and I realized that truly was my loss. As I prepared for this evening, I researched his background, and honestly, there is so much to say about Mr. Tobias. By all accounts, he was a wonderful man. But we have a few speakers on the program this evening to share their great stories and memories, and I don't want to take up too much of everyone's time. However, I did want to share this one last item with you. Something I thought was really very sweet, and I think is evidence of what everyone means when they say Mr. Tobias was a wonderful and caring man. This information came directly from his resume that he submitted here in our school district, and I've left a copy for his daughters and for his sisters to take home as a little momentum. So when you get a chance, take a look at that. Listed on his resume, before Mr. Tobias's educational background, his military service, his professional accomplishments, his certifications, his honors, his publications, and his research, printed directly under his name, and where you would be able to reach him is what I believe Mr. Tobias thought was most important and what he wanted people to know about him. He is married. His wife's name is Carmela Catherine. 
and he has two daughters, Judith Ann and Jenny Lynn. Joyce, I guess you hadn't arrived yet. <laughs> I really think that says it all about the type of person Mr. Tobias was. And South Plainfield was very lucky to have him. So our first speaker on the program this evening is Mary Tobias, Mr. Tobias's sister. So Mary, will you please join me here at the podium? Thank you. Superintendent Dr. Lichette, President of the Board, Mr. Panacee, Board members, and fellow colleagues, teachers, community, and family. What an honor. If Leonard were at this podium, he would smile and say thank you for this honor you bestow on me for a career that was so rewarding to me every minute of the day. Len, as he was known by our family, began his amazing voyage in education by tutoring his three younger sisters, and he was our hero. He was a dreamer, always searching. Len believed that working hard and doing your best would open all doors for you. His students with their smiles, their questions, their inquisitiveness made him work harder to continually provide a pathway for them for success. Our goals and the push for accomplishments simply define as our work rapidly moves us through time. We just don't have enough time to think. We're always working. And before long, retirement arrives. And oh gosh, we can go on vacation, we can rest, we can do all these things. But after about 12 months, to 18 months, we're ready to go back to what we did. We've had a refresher and we're ready to go back. Len experienced that. He missed those smiles of the little ones. He missed the administrative uh, provoking him to think and to, for him to grow. He missed all of that. You could tell it in his smile. He really did have, when he wasn't thinking hard, but he was talking, he had a beautiful smile, as you all see on the picture that has been presented. I am in awe to be walking, to be in this building, where he spent so many years of his career doing what he truly loved. His rewards were many. Hopefully his ideas, his philosophies, and his practices will live on through many students that graduate and the successes that they achieve. My sisters and Joe, we would like to take, extend our deepest appreciation for what you have done for us, for Len. A thank you for this rededication of this building in Len's name. And you know he will be smiling on and you will fill him in these halls. He will be very, he's very grateful for this. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Tobias's daughter Joyce to come up. Good evening, Dr. Lishak, Mr. Panisi, Mr. Benante, Mr. Barbier, Dr. Seitz, members of the Board of Education, honored guests, and members of the community. 
It is with great honor to be here tonight with you to honor a tremendous educator. And forgive me if I get to read it. My father, Leonard A. Tobias. My father was an extraordinary man who loved being an educator. I was going to share some of his background, but Dr. Lachey stated it perfectly. So upon dad's retirement, my dad became active in township politics. I was on the New Jersey State Training School for Boys Community Board. He was a member of St. James West Church. He spent a considerable, considerable time with his wife, Dolly, who most of you all know. Um, his children and six grandchildren. Although quite busy, my dad always continued to attend South Plainfield musical festivals and functions in the district. Years past his retirement due to his love for the school district and the families. South Plainfield became my father's second home and our second home. We grew up with my father spending long days and long nights in South Plainfield. <sighs> Yes, 100%. <laughs> I still remember his phone number, 908-754-3660, by heart. My father would drive home after very long board meetings, which was often, and my mother would get up and cook for him. I remember waking up as a little one and walking down the hallway to say hello to him as my mom sat with him till the wee hours of the morning talking with him about things that were happening in the community. My sisters and I actually, my mom had us sit down and pray every night before the board meeting. She would gather us in a circle and she would have us kneel down and pray for my dad to guide him in the right direction. That's who my mom and dad were. Excuse me for a second. My sisters and I grew up with South Plainfield. Our friends would joke about our snow days. If our, if our home got a call at 5 a.m., Dad made the call as to whether the South Plainfield district was in session or they had a snow day. If Dad said South Plainfield was in session, most likely Monroe Township followed, which is where we lived. We always thought that Dr. Massaro spoke with dad on those days. We also felt extremely proud that our father worked in such a beautiful district. When visiting the district for athletic events, our friends always would ask if our dad could come to Munro Township and get cushions on our seats for us, so that when we attended a basketball game, we had cushioned seats, like South Plainfield. My favorite memory was when my father spoke at a district event, such as graduation or a festival. He was such a wonderful, motivating speaker who could give you chills when he spoke, and you felt like he was touching each and every person in the audience. Leonard A. Tobias significantly impacted the students, families, and community in the South Bainfield School District from 1962 until 1991. His love for teaching showed in his care and concern for children. He was a loving man who cared about his family tremendously, but he also cared about every person he came in contact with, from friends, colleagues, to the wait staff that would wait on us when we would go out to dinner. No matter who he spoke with, he made a positive impact and touched their lives. Leonard A. Tobias was a true educator and will be great, greatly missed by all. Most of you know my father, but I wanted to share some words about him that a friend shared with me, that I also shared at his eulogy. I can't, a friend of mine wrote this to me when my dad passed. I can't tell you how much I looked up to him. I was a punk kid and he was always very welcoming from day one. If I had three daughters and someone like me at the time came to the house, I would have shown them the door. But your dad and mom saw past that and knew that there was someone good there. The one thing I will always remember about your dad is that he believed in me. 
when I did not believe in myself. I can recall him sitting down with me at the table laying out why education was so very important. He was trying to get me to return to school. When I got a job at Columbia University as adjunct faculty, the first thing I thought of was how proud your father would have been of me. It has always stuck with me through my masters and will stick with me through my current role. Most of you can imagine or remember my father doing the same for multiple people, children, and possibly even you. This was who my father was. He was a loving man who cared about his family, family tremendously, but cared about each person. As an educator myself, I have repeated his words multiple times. If you have kids in mind, and you were doing something that benefits kids, you cannot go wrong. My father was a true educator, the best of the best. I hope when students ask, who was Leonard A. Tobias? The response is a true educator who always put students first. I know that he is here right now watching with my mom from above and is deeply grateful for each and every one of you that has made this day happen. On behalf of my family, Dr. Leshak, Mr. Panisi, the members of the Board of Education, honored guests, friends and family, and members of the community, I thank you so very much for the rededication of this building in honor of my dad. Thank you. That was beautiful. Dr. Barbillo? I don't know how you can stop that. <laughs> I guess I'll have to make it short, but I certainly can't top that. <laughs> Actually, it seems like deja vu because it was uh, 45 years ago today, well, this year, that uh, I was hired as a new principal uh, for this school. And my wife did the Dinosaurs, I hope that was still on the wall out there in Europe, and there should have come one day. And Len was the superintendent at the time. I have fond memories. At that time also, I was the outsider, because he brought a lot of his friends from uh, the town of Pennsylvania. There were about four or five guys that were there from the same town. They all came with Len. So they had a nice relationship with Len. They, they could be um, frank for lack of a better word. And I, I never forget my first administrative meeting. So I'm all excited. I forget the building was. We had to go upstairs up on the second floor to the building. So all, I'm sitting there, it's like, oh, this is gonna be great. And Len decides to get into a discussion with the high school principal. Now, in my experience, high school principals are not usually shrinking violets. They are usually willing to go back and forth with frank discussions. And the next thing I know, they're going back and forth, pointing their fingers at us, and I'm sitting there, it's like, oh, wow. I went home that night, and my wife said, so how was your face first meeting? I said, oh my God, it was unbelievable. I can't wait for the next meeting. <laughs> and I turned around to Tony St. Cabbage. I said, hey, Tony, all these are our meetings all like this? He said, oh, they get better sometimes. <laughs> I learned one thing. Len was the type of guy that you could talk to. You can get excited, you can get angry, but you would have a discussion, it was over, the next day business carried on. And then after 23 years as a principal here and two years as a superintendent, Len sent to me, Someday you're going to be a superintendent. I said, oh, that's never going to happen, Len. <clears throat> Someday I did become a superintendent, which I thought for sure I would die in South Plainfield because I really liked it here after 25 years. And then I realized the adage about when you become a superintendent. I think I called Lee Seitz. I said, Lee, what's it all about? He said, Mario, remember one thing. 
Every year you're a superintendent, it's like a dog's life. It takes seven years of your life. I said, oh, Maron, I was only five years. I'm thinking, how many years was Lent a superintendent in this district? You know how hard this district was at some point, especially when you had split boards? He was able to coalesce and put people and have people work because he was South Plainfield. Like you think of the schools in South Plainfield, he was South Plainfield. He was highly intelligent, hardworking, and yes, he had the gift of conversation. We would go to meetings, we'd have all the principals sit at the front of the row for budget meetings, you know, to help maybe mitigate any disparaging conversations about budgets. And we'd sit there and people would raise their hands and say this and say that and so on and so forth and let them go on and on and on. And then at one point, Tony St. Catherine said to me, are we doing that? I said, we are now, Tony. <laughs> if Len said we're doing it, we're doing it now. It's like, okay, I got it. And, and he knew how to bring out the best in everybody. And he, he was always very compassionate. There were several incidents where we had situations, I had situations with some of my teachers. He said, no, no, no. We're going to work with these teachers. We're going to work with them to make sure that we're going to try to bring out the best in every single one of them. And of course, he knew all his administrators because they would like to give him a little push every now and again. Uh, one, of the, one of my colleagues said, you know, Len, we never go to conferences. You know, we ought to go out and go to conferences. Really, he said to Tom, well, well which conference are you thinking about? He said, oh, yeah, this conference in California, so on and so forth. He said, I'll think about it. Next meeting, we'll talk about it. All right. I said, well, that's pretty good, you know. We're going to be able to go out of the district to a conference out of New Jersey on top of that. <laughs> Next meeting comes. We're sitting there. He said, you know, Tom, I was thinking about what you said. He said, yeah, yeah, that's good. What, what's up? He said, I got the video from the conference. <laughs> you can watch it sometime. I said, well, Tom, you know, you better keep your mouth shut because you're not going to win in a, a verbal contest with Len. That is never, never going to happen. And I, I could truly say, I could truly say that 56 years in education, uh, I, I couldn't touch a candle to Len. I dedicated my uh, first book to Len. I told him how proud I was that uh, he showed me the ropes and helped guide me, and it made a tremendous impact. And he saw in people, he would say, this one's going to do it. You're going to do this. And I, I remember talking about these sites and said, geez, Lee, how, how many administrators do you think went on because of Len? He said a lot. And I, I guess if, if you could say in your career in education that you made a difference, you know, and even one or two people, that's saying something. But to make a difference for a community of people and for administrators, that is stellar. I, I, there isn't anyone that is more deserving of such an honor. And I am, I am blessed to have worked with them for 25 years at MBA at South Landfill. So thank you for inviting me. time I had the great honor of working with Len Tobias and Jill so I think was one of my students and I was there when she scored her 1,000th point and that was one of my uh, to Len's uh, grandchildren uh, your grandfather was a tremendous man and I'm going to say a few things uh, and I'm really proud to be a part of this program because he obviously had a huge impact on me. Uh, 
When I first got here, I was a brand new high school principal. I knew everything. <laughs> and uh, quickly learned that he didn't. And fortunately for me, Len became my mentor. And while I can't document it, I truly believe that in my first year here, I spent 50% of my time in his office being told what I should be doing differently. <laughs> but the thing is, not only was he correct, but it was in an educational mode that he shared with me. It was educating me on how to be a better administrator, a better leader. And that really went on for a number of years. And he was unbelievably successful. And I think that's one of the unique things about Len, in that he took the time to know people and to help them become better. Didn't matter what you did, didn't matter where you were from, if you were interacting with him, he was looking for a way to make you more successful. And that is something you can't put a price on. Now, just so we don't get too emotional here, uh, Len was great at a lot of things. But he was by far the worst Simon Says player in the world. <laughs> uh, at graduate graduation, the first hour was a gentleman, professional guy, who did Simon Says. And each year he'd start off the program by bringing about 25 people, students, faculty, and one year he picked Len. And I'm telling you, Len was terrible. Len was making mistake after mistake after mistake. And instead of having him sit down, Bobby Gold, the Simon Says guy, said, look, Len, we'll give you 25 mistakes before you have to sit down. <laughs> so I was laughing at him, he's having a good time. And we start. And within a matter of 30 seconds, Len has like 10 errors already. <laughs> and prior to that, he said to someone in the audience, look, you count the errors, but he gets 25 and he sits down. So he was doing, he's counting, he's counting. Bobby Gold says, how many errors does he have? Guy said uh, 12, and then starts arguing with the student <laughs> that he only had 10. <laughs> and it was just an insight into Len's tremendous sense of humor. Uh, and then I, of course, uh, in my own way, asked the gentleman who was videotaping the evening to take the one hour Simon Says segment and cut out everything except Len making mistakes. <laughs> it was eight minutes long. <laughs> And we shared, shared it with the uh, other administrators at one of our leadership uh, meetings uh, with Len. And of course, Len led the laughter, because it was really funny when you have this tremendous educator, this leader, this superintendent for over 20 years, making mistake after mistake after mistake. So Len had a great sense of humor. And as Mario said, and the principal he was referring to was not me. <laughs> But Len and I did have a really wonderful conversation one night. Uh, a parent was complaining about something, so I was called over to his office in the grad school. And uh, I walk in, and there's the parent, and there's Len, and there's me, and Len asked me a question based on what the parent was complaining about. And uh, as Mario said, we're not necessarily drinking violence when it comes to being confronted with a, uh, a challenge. So, I forget what it was about, and if I did remember, I probably shouldn't tell you, but <laughs> Len and I started to get into a, an argument. <laughs> and this parent, who you would know if I had mentioned her name, was very aggressive, she actually backed away from the table. <laughs> <laughs> I'm there, and Len's there, we're going back and forth, back and forth. So Len, being the great mediator that he is, says, Dr. Munger, come over here. Dad Munger was our uh, curriculum person. I forget whether she was director or whatever. So Dad comes in, and there I am, and there's Lynn. We're at each other, and he asks her the question. Now, of course, I had to correct him because he didn't ask the right question. <laughs> but Dad knew immediately that she did not want to be here, and she did not want to give an answer. And she very tactfully backed out of the room. But the thing with Lynn, 
And I hope you don't mind me calling him Len, but he's, he's such an important person to me, and that's how I, I know him and how I work with him. He did not take that as an affront. He took that as really a learning experience for him and for me. And that's what made him so special. And over the years that I was here, and it seemed like a lot more than you know, six or seven, uh, he always acted that way. He always took the time to learn from every experience and share what he learned and asked me to share what I learned. So when we talk about Lynn Tobias, and again, he trained me to be an effective administrator. Uh, I actually just finished up, I think my 25th year as a superintendent. And uh, I think a lot of my, I'll call it success, uh, during those 25 years was the result of Len taking the time to work with me. There were so many subtleties, and I think those of you who are in the field of education, you may think you know what the superintendent does, but I don't think you do. Uh, if you're a teacher, you know what a teacher does. If you're an administrator, building administrator, you know what a building administrator does. If you're a supervisor of something or other, you know what that person does. But the superintendency is very unique. And you can't imagine what it's like. And I, I love it, don't get me wrong, I love being a superintendent. But you can't imagine what it's like until you're in that barrel. And it's, it's tough. And as I think Mario said, that didn't really affect him. And I think that was because he had a vision of what public education should be. He was always focused on what was important to each and every student and teacher and parent and community stakeholder. He understood that a superintendency is not about running the schools. It's a mission, and he had that mission to make the South Plainfield community and school system better than when he found it. I think he did that. So when you think about Len, you know, great sense of humor, very bright, very uh, articulate. But the thing that I take away from this is that he had great integrity. He was loyal beyond belief to this community. And he was always focused on how to get to that vision. And along the way, you're gonna be ambushed, you're going to have problems, you're going to have failures, but with Len, regardless of what those things were that interfered with his ability to get to that vision, he plowed ahead. And that's why I don't think these interruptions bothered him, because he knew he was on a mission to achieve that vision of having every student be as successful as possible. So I think it's wonderful that the South Plainfield Board of Education is dedicating this facility to Lynn. Because when you think of what a leader should be, when you think of what an educator should be, it's Lynn. He loved kids, he loved his family, and uh, I think if anything, he probably regretted all the time he had to spend up here to keep things moving instead of being at home. But he made that sacrifice because he had committed himself to this community. So. Congratulations on the dedication. Uh, he certainly deserves it. I know he made a tremendous uh, change in my life, and I thank him for that. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Setz. Our final speaker this evening is uh, Board President Pio Panisi. He is going to be doing uh, the dedication. So we'll be joining uh, everybody will be joining us in the vestibule, but that's after a few a few uh, I guess a, a few stories of, about about Mr. Tobias. Yeah. Yeah. I think I have five sheets, but I literally didn't be last. <laughs> really, I, I was in front of my computer uh, probably for about two hours staring at it, and nothing was coming up. And I, I, I mean, a lot of things were coming up. But I, but I, I just couldn't just write something down. Um, you know, uh, it's it's like a real honor. I want to welcome everybody. I'm not going to go through everybody's name and who's here because I'll mess that up, and I don't want to offend anybody. But but thank you very. It's a special special day. 
when uh, when uh, Mr. Sosnick uh, sent the letter in um, wanting to nominate uh, uh, Mr. Tobias, and uh, it's still Mr. Tobias. Um, you know, I think I was able to call him in once in a while, Lenny, when I was, you know, a, a much older, but still couldn't do it. It's just, just the way I brought it up, and, and, and just the kind of respect. He, he didn't expect it, it's just what, he, what I did. Um, uh, you know, when that came up, and, and the board, you know, unanimously voted, and, and there are a few board members who remember uh, Mr. Tobias. Um, and the other ones who heard our stories or whatever, uh, no one hesitated. And it was, it was just, for me personally, you know, um, the fact that I'm president for this occasion kind of made my career because uh, I've known Lennon for um, 60 years. Um, I'm an immigrant, came from Italy, moved to South Plainfield when I was five and went to the South Plainfield School District and it was grad school. And I went to grad school and uh, that's where I first met Mr. Tobias. Um, not that I have interactions because I always got in trouble, but I, you know, I was one of the safety patrol kids so I got to know him that way. But uh, I, I guess the, the story that just stuck in my mind for all these years um, I'm on the playground and my younger brother was coming for his first day of school and here comes my Italian mother who doesn't speak a lick of English. Great, walking into school, walks through the gates and I'm in the playground and I'm watching. And he's crying like unbelievable, my brother. And Mr. Devise is out there and he walks over, bends over, picks him up, holds him. As my mother says goodbye and leave, and held him there until he stopped crying, and he stopped crying. And I, I just couldn't believe that, and that, that stuck to me. When I heard I was gonna, you know, when I know I was gonna say something, that's the story that 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 was Mr. Device then. Uh, later on, I went through my career at you know in South Plainfield, uh, but again uh, I met him because I started working for South Plainfield. I was a senior in high school, and I worked for the board cutting grass and lying fields and doing that stuff, which I loved to do, and then went to college and did it during the summer, and, and, and Mr. Devise was superintendent, so again, I had a close relationship with him then. Um, when I graduated college, and I became a teacher. Um, so we had a lot to talk about. And um, after that, we have a couple in here, I think the Sarah over here, somebody who dragged me into being a board member. I remember, I remember coming over to my house. To, uh, I, when I got married, I was in North for one year. I came to my house and walks in. He goes, hey, you want to go be a board member? And uh, Tony was my football player, by the, my coach, when I was in high school. Sorry, I had to give that away. <laughs> But I said, I said, Tony, I have a, a, a one-year-old, look at the wall boards, I can't do it. But I did do it after a couple of years, and now I had a different role with Mr. Wise. He was a superintendent, and I was a board member. And, and what he taught me, um, I mean, to this day, helps me for, at that position. I mean, just the respect he had for the board, and the board in return had respect just because of who he was and what he did, how he talked to you, how he helped you, it was it was just amazing. It was amazing for him, for me. You know, he retired then, and then I went through my career and I became superintendent of schools myself. And of course, Lenny had to call me, he congratulate me, talk to me, and we had a conversation. So he's been in my life forever. So it it means a lot. And uh, excuse me. Um, to be able to do this tonight. Um, he was a, I'd say gentle giant, you always hear about him, because he was a, a big guy, like me. Like, and he had that, that, that voice and, and when he spoke, but even though it was loud, he never felt like he was yelling at you, even though maybe his administrators felt like that. You gotta remember, I was a board member and so I don't know, but, but it was just different. And he just had respect, and, and I think at the board meeting when we dedicated, uh, uh, we proved this, I said, you know, I never realized that he lived somewhere else. I didn't know that, that he lived 
in Jamesburg. I thought he retired to Jamesburg. <laughs> and, because he was always here. He was always here. At every function, with everything, and after he retired, he was always there. I know, and um, I looked at him and, and what I taught, I have a lot of mentors in my life, and I have some of them sitting in the audience, but I don't know anybody who had more influence on my life. And I don't want to say life, not just career, my life, than Lenny. So, you know, I, I just want to say that I'm just so grateful to be able to be here and be able to see this happening, and thank the board for having this happen. Um, it's just a great thing, and I'm going to cut it near before I, before I'm like Joyce, pretty soon. <laughs> and then I'll have to listen from the rest of the people afterwards. But what I like this time is if we can move to the vestibule, and that is, you know, family church, so we can, we can do the How are we doing Joe it on here? Joe? Here. Joe? Somebody got Where's Joe? Joe? It takes a minute. Yeah. Yeah, I'll wait for Joe. Joe? Here he comes. Joe? Joe? I want you up here. He's falling off the board. That's why I can't reach you. I want you over here. Let me tell you something. A couple years ago, I'd have been able to grab it. Really? Two, two, three. There we go. I'll take this. Thank you. Also, we have a blender in there. If you notice that sign, we have a sign out there with just two, well, we have a po two posts where a sign is supposed to be. And uh, we're also going to put a sign out there for, for Mr. Tobias, along with another plaque that will hang underneath that Roosevelt's sign. And this is a rendering of it because they're not ready yet. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Go back inside, and, and if you want to take pictures, our families want to take pictures. You can. They'll just be inside for for refreshments. Thank you so much.